absolute proof that Srila Prabhupada spoke of after Samadhi Ritvik system before the May 28th meeting, or the GBC asked ridiculously absurd and stupid questions. Since the GBC formulated their two questions regarding this topic before their meeting with Srila Prabhupada, it is appropriate that we analyze the peculiar nature of those questions before we get to the actual meeting. So why do I say the nature of these particular questions is peculiar? And just what is so peculiar about them? Well, first, let's briefly review the situation. Just 12 days earlier, on May 16th, Shri Prabhupada had announced that he would be leaving this world soon and requested be, be taken to Vrindavan. In the following days, most of the GBC members had gathered in Vrindavan to be by his side. On the 22nd of May, he gives the dictation for, uh, of the draft for his uh, last legal will. Then the GBC members meet and come to an agreement on what topics they need to seek his final instructions on before he leaves. Uh, on May 23rd, they had asked him all to go in and ask Srila Prabhupada if he's going to select a successor guru. And Pramal came back to them and told them Prabhupada's going to set up a Ritvik system and he will remain the actual guru and they will just initiate on his behalf after he departs. So with that knowledge, they wrote down just a handful of questions to ask him. And regarding the issue of initiations and gurus, as Gauri Das Pandit has long stated that, you know, as I just said, that prior to the meeting, Tamal had gone in and asked, and Prabhupada said he would soon create this Ritvik Acharya system. And so, where he remains the initiating guru even after he departs. Most of the GBC has, you know, they've rejected that that took place. So let's look at the nature of these two questions and analyze them from both perspectives. That is, we were going to analyze them based on the premise that Srila Prabhupada had not discussed setting up an ongoing Ritvik system for after he departs before this meeting. And then we will analyze these questions on the basis that he had. First, we will assume that Srila Prabhupada had not said anything of setting up a, an ongoing Ritvik system. Given the fact that Srila Prabhupada had announced that he would be leaving us soon, then what would have been the number one question? on the senior devotees' minds regarding this issue of gurus and initiations for after Prabhupada departs? Well, most vividly obvious would be the question of who? <laughs> who will be the next guru? As I said, that's what, according to uh, Gauri Das Pandit, the GBC had asked him all to go in and ask Srila Prabhupada on May 23rd, who will be the next guru, Srila Prabhupada? Who will you select? So that would have been their number one question. Will Srila Prabhupada only select but one successor, or would he select multiple successors? But again, their main numero uno, number one question would have been, who? Who will be the next guru? Yet when we look at the questions the GBC chose to ask, well, this is why I say the nature of these these questions is so quite peculiar and quite obviously so. First of all, in their list of topics to discuss, the topic of initia initiations was nestled in the middle. Generally, either the very first question that is asked is the most important and given top priority, or sometimes just the opposite. Sometimes the most important is saved for last. But the GBC put the question on this topic in the middle and indi indicating that they didn't consider it of their greatest importance at that time. But that would have made no sense if they were only anticipating that Srila Prabhupada would soon be selecting his successor, the next guru for ISKCON. So what, was, what is so particular about these questions? Well, let's go over the two questions themselves. On the screen is a copy of the original May 28, 1977, handwritten questions that the GBC were to ask Srila Prabhupada on this date. Questions number three and number four pertain to initiations. Three, in the absence of Srila Prabhupada, what is the procedure for the first, second, uh, and sannyasa initiations? What is the procedure? 
Number four, what is the relationship of the person who gives this initiation to the person he gives it to? Note, however, that when Satsvarup asked the first question, number three on the list, he, re he, re uh, he reworded it. But the basic meaning is the same. The written question asks what the procedure was to be for initiations in the future. Satsvarup reworded it and asked, how are the initiations to be conducted? I mean, these are close enough to the same thing. To ask what the procedure was or how to conduct initiations is not at all the same as asking who will be the next guru. And what is so peculiar is that these GBC men knew perfectly well what the procedures were or how to conduct a regular initiation. If we are to accept the GVC's premise that Srila Prabhupada had not told them anything prior to this meeting, that he was planning on setting up an ongoing Ridvik system, then this question was nothing less than absurd. It was really a dumb question to ask, especially given that this was just one out of only two questions that the GBC felt had to be asked before Srila Prabhupada departs. A number of the GBC men had assisted Srila Prabhupada with the procedures, and they themselves had conducted many aspects of regular initiations for so many years. For them to consider this to be such an important and pressing question, their number one of only two questions on this topic that they felt Srila Prabhupada had to answer before he leaves, it's just ridiculously absurd if they were asking about regular initiations performed by, well, performed by who? <laughs> yes, performed by regular gurus. Then, but then that puts us right back to the, what should have been their main number one question on this issue at the time, and that would have been who? will be those regular gurus? Who will be performing those regular initiations after he departs? So far, I have pointed out how absurd this first question was. If Srila Prabhupada had not been discussing a Ridvik system before this meeting, when we come to analyzing Srila Prabhupada's response to that first question, then it will become even more obvious that Srila Prabhupada had been discussing setting up an ongoing Ritvik system before this May 28th meeting. So let's analyze this question from that perspective. Let's assume that Gauri Das Pandit has been speaking the truth and is right about this, that Srila Prabhupada had discussed this with Tamal prior to this meeting. Well, that would explain why the GBC didn't make this topic the very first top priority to, to ask about this topic, but instead it became their third and fourth questions rather than their first question. And it explains why they, they didn't ask the question of who will be the next guru. Well, if Srila Prabhupada was to, be, was to remain as initiator guru, at least for now, within his ISKCON mission, then that's why they asked the question as they asked it. You know, none of them will be gurus. Rather than wanting to ask then who will be the next guru, all they wanted to know was what the procedures would be. You know, how would it be different from the procedures of the regular initiations? Once the problem was no longer physically present, but yet he remained the initiator guru, then the GBC wanted to know, well, how? You know, uh, how or, or, you know, what those procedures were and how those non-regular procedures were to be conducted. Taking this perspective then, that Srila Prabhupada had discussed the Ritvik system with Tamal, and Tamal then discussed with the other GBC men before this meeting, then this question makes sense. It is absolutely ridiculous and absurd and makes no sense at all taking that Srila Prabhupada had not discussed this previously. And again, when we get to that point, when we analyze Srila uh, an Prabhupada's response to this question, again, 
his response and the GBC's response to his response, it's just, it makes full and total sense only when we accept the understanding that Srila Prabhupada had discussed the system prior to this meeting. Okay, so their first question um, does most strongly bring us to conclude that this was the case, but the GBC had come up with two questions. So what about the second Well, this is even more compelling to that conclusion than the first question. The second and final of the two questions regarding initiations after Prabhupada departs that the GBC, GBC felt most pressing was, what is the relationship of the person who gives this initiation to the person he gives it to? Again, we will analyze the second question from perspectives. First, we will assume that Srila Prabhupada had, been, had said nothing at all about setting up a Ridvik system for after he departs. If that were the case, then the GBC would have assumed that he would be selecting a successor, or probably successors, who would be the actual regular guru or gurus of their own disciples. Taking this perspective then, the second question by the, G by the GBC is nothing short of a total joke. It is many times more foolish than the first one. As in, like, duh. I mean, really, duh. Let me read that question. Then let me give the answer. What is the relationship of the person who gives this initiation to the person he gives it to? Now, bear with me for a minute or two, because I, can't ju I, I just can't resist. I've got to have a little fun with this. Remember, we are taking the perspective that his divine grace has not said anything about setting up a Ridvik system, whether before or after he departs. With this perspective, then, the GBC would be assuming that Srila Prabhupada was going to you know, appoint a regular guru, or possibly gurus carry on with regular initiations after he departs. So how many years were those GBC men devotees by that time? So let's see how to answer this. Well, uh, the, 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 uh, assuming that, that this is a real question, this, first of all, the person who gives this initiation, hmm, what do they mean by this initiation? If they had no knowledge of his divine grace wanting a non-regular you know, system for initiation, why do we refer it to by the word this initiation? That seems a bit out of place. Obviously, they would have just been asking about regular guru giving a regular initiation. So they are asking about the relationship between the person who gives a regular initiation with the person who is initiated. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's see. Uh, so who is the person who gives initiation? Well, I mean, this is, this is really hard. Uh, wait, wait, that would have to be the guru. Ah, yes, the guru, he gives initiation. And, and so the GBC went to ask Srila Prabhupada, what is the relationship between the guru uh, and the person they give initiation to? Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah, this is really getting hard. I, I, now I can see why the GBC felt that there was no way they could answer such a difficult question on their own. I mean, only Srila Prabhupada was advanced enough to answer such a, such a difficult question. But I'm going to put myself on a limb. I'm going to try and answer this anyway. After all, it's now we're 43 years later, so we should be able to figure this out on our own, right? So we got the first half answered already that the person who gives the initiation, he's the guru. Now, what is the person called who gets initiated? Um, all right, let me think about this. Hmm. I, 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 think, I think I got it. The person who is getting initiated, he's called the disciple. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's the disciple. So, so what, what was it that the GBC was, was really asking?
what was the second of only two questions on this topic that they felt was just no way that they would be able to answer this on their own, that only his divine grace could answer? They were asking, what was the relationship between the guru who gives the initiation and the disciple who is initiated? Well, uh, wait, that's not such a hard question. Their re the relationship is that the guru is the guru of the disciple he initiates. And the disciple is the disciple of the guru who initiates him. Well, duh. <laughs> I mean, really, duh. There, the relationship is that the guru is the guru and the disciple is the disciple. They have a guru and disciple relationship. Really? This was the second of only two questions that the GBC could come up with that they felt only Srila Prabhupada could answer? This question is dumber than ridiculous. This question is dumber than absurd. This question is dumber than dumb. Why would the GBC ask such a ridiculously dumb and absurdly simplistic question? Keep in mind that the GBC wrote these two questions down before they went into the meeting with Srila Prabhupada that day. So if we assume that the perspective, this perspective that Srila Prabhupada had not discussed, had not said anything to them, prior to this meeting about any Ridvik system, then this is a real dumber than dumb question to be asking. In this scenario, the GBC would not have been asking about the relationship of the Ridviks who perform the ceremonies and those who are being initiated, because according to this scenario, according to what the GBC have been saying, Srila Prabhupada had not spoken of Ritvik system before this meeting. Yet these two questions are written down before the meeting. So obviously, these two questions alone provide ample evidence that Srila Prabhupada had discussed his plan of, to select Ritvikacharyas who, after he departs, would perform the initiation ceremonies on his behalf before these men had decided upon and wrote down these two questions. Add, uh, and add, and to add even more, Final evidence is Shiller, the response that Srila Prabhupada gave to the first question. We'll get to that when we get into, after we hear the actual um, recording. So let's, but let's look at the second question with the perspective that Srila Prabhupada had indeed told Tamal that he was planning on setting up this ongoing Ritvik system. And that Tamal Krishna relayed that message to at least some of the other GBC men. Well, although the question can be much, be much better understood what the GBC were then attempting to ask. The problem is they didn't word the question properly or clearly enough. And worse, Satsvarup changed one word that made his asking of this question even less concise as to what they were really intending to ask. Following this perspective, however, what is obvious is that the GBC were trying to ask what the relationship was, uh, if there was to be any special relationship at all, between the Ritvik priest who performs the ceremonies of the initiation on behalf of Srila Prabhupada and those who are being initiated. According to Gauri Das Pandit Prabhu, Tamal had asked this a very similar question to Srila Prabhupada on May 23rd, in the days before this meeting. He asked Srila Prabhupada if the Ritviks would sit on Vyasasans and if they would be respected like the Guru by the new initiates. Srila Prabhupada said no and pointed out that for the Ritviks to receive special status that it would bring breed jealousy amongst the disciples. And I'll give a reference link. Srila Prabhupada said no. So at a special status, and if they would be respected like the guru by the new initiates, Srila Prabhupada said no, and pointed out that for the Ridviks to receive special status, that it would bring breed jealousy amongst the disciples. And I'll give a reference link. Srila Prabhupada said no. So it appears that the GBC wanted to confirm 
this in a formal meeting. Uh, and they wanted to confirm that what Tamal Krishna told them that Srila Prabhupada had said. They wanted to hear it directly from Srila Prabhupada. And that's why they asked this question. So it is so obvious that this is what they intended to ask by this question, because there's no other reasonable explanation for asking such a question. But they didn't word it in a concise enough way. And because of that, the question can easily be taken to be asking something totally different, especially with the one word that Satsvarup changed when he asked the question. What the GBC had written down, or what was written down prior to the meeting was, number four, what is the relationship of the person who gives this initiation to the person he gives it to? But the way Satsvarup started to ask the question was, what is the relationship of the person who gives the initiation? Not this. Okay, all that he did was change the word this to the word that, the. It may not seem to be a big deal, but that one change could very well have easily changed how Srila Prabhupada understood the question. The GBC were wanting to ask about the Ritviks. They were, if they would have any special relationship with the ones who were being initiated. Therefore, they weren't referring to a regular initiation and weren't referring to the regular guru of a regular initiation. There were, um, where there were no Ridviks. Therefore, the word this, as in this initiation, signifies that the GBC are not asking about a regular initiation, but are specifically referring to this, the non-regular, or the Ritvik system of initiation. But if that was what they were really meaning to ask, then why didn't they just ask the question directly? For example, why didn't they just ask, what is the relationship of that Ridvik Acharya who performs the initiation ceremony and the person who is being initiated? Well, that's a good question. Why didn't they ask the question like that? The only likely explanation I could give is that the term Ridvik Acharya was totally, un it was just a totally unheard of term. You won't find it in the Veda base. Uh, Srila Prabhupada had never used that term before. The first time Tamal Krishna had heard it was in the meetings he held with Srila Prabhupada prior to this meeting. But the only time the other GBC men had heard that term was from Tamal Krishna. Since they had never heard that term used by Srila Prabhupada directly before, they just weren't probably sure that Tamal got it right. So they decided to keep their question as general as possible. And so they just asked about this initiation this different sort of procedure, of initiation procedure. What, what were the procedures of this different sort of initiation? And what, if any, were the special relationships that that person who's going to give those initiations, though this initiations, what were they, uh, would they have some special relationship with those who are initiated? But when Satsvarup asked the question, he accidentally changed the word this to the which could easily be mistaking that he was just asking about the regular aspects of the initiation, not the Ritvik, different, this aspect. More about this when we analyze the actual meeting. So here before the meeting, the GBC men met and came up with only these two questions about such a major issue as this. And, excuse me, and all they wanted to know was what was the what was what the procedure was going to be, or how were these different sort of initiations to be conducted after Prabhupada departs? And secondly, what was the special relationship, if any, between that Ritvik priest and those who were being initiated? This is the only way that these two questions make any sort of sense at all. And as we will soon see, it is the only way Srila Prabhupada's response to the first question makes any sort of sense at all. When we try to pretend that Srila Prabhupada hadn't spoke of the Ritvik system prior to this meeting and the GBC had no knowledge of that, then the very nature of these questions becomes absurd and it makes no real sense. Therefore, I find these evidences to be conclusive and provide solid proof that Srila Prabhupada had, for a proven fact, discussed setting up this ongoing Ridvik system before the, the GBC met with him on May 28th. Because his divine grace was in very poor health, bedridden, and weak, 
during this meeting, not in this last two minute, I mean, not in this two minute section that deals on this topic, but later on in the, the full meeting, we find that at one point, Srila Prabhupada complains that the microphone was going into his mouth. And he even made a joke about it. According to the Vedic tra- uh, the Veda based uh, transcript, Balananda was the one holding the mic. So it would appear that Srila Prabhupada <coughs> must have been in the bed, uh, lying down, it was very weak. And uh, during the meeting, we've seen videos. And so Balananda was holding the microphone above his mouth, but kind of, uh, you know, wasn't paying attention, I guess. And the, the microphone was going into Srila Prabhupada's mouth anyway. So Prabhupada was holding large meetings. Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada's personal secretary, Tamal Krishna, was acting as, as Srila Prabhupada's gatekeeper at Dwarpala, gatekeeper in Sanskrit. It was, it's totally understandable that in such a weak condition, that when Srila Prabhupada wanted to introduce something as major as this, he would have began privately by telling his personal secretary, knowing that Tamal, uh, just one second, as a GBC, would then inform the other GBC members. And that after the GBC members discuss this, then a few of them can come and discuss questions that they have about this Ritvik system. This meeting was the GBC's opportunity to ask questions on this issue that they felt were most important to be settled. And that is what took place. Therefore, the only honest and intelligent way to now analyze the actual meeting is with this understanding. What real difference does this all make? Significant difference. It shapes the way that we can now understand the nature of these questions that the GBC were asking. And it gives us a much more meaningful insight into Srila Prabhupada's responses to those questions.